Uh, our next speaker is uh, Professor Mansur Hussain uh, from Bangladesh, uh, the president of Bangladesh Pediatric Association. Yes, uh, over to Professor Mansur Hussain. Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, thank you, respected chairperson, to introduce me and giving me the opportunity. I, I express my gratitude to Sri Lankan College of Pediatrician. May I share my screen now? Is it visible? Yes, sir, visible. Okay. Uh, I'll be talking on double burden of malnutrition. The outline of my talk will be, uh, what is it? Its manifestation dimension, what are the drivers of double burden malnutrition and the prevalence in Bangladesh, that is the Bangladesh scenario, uh, based on the latest available data and the association of different household level factors within it. So uh, I don't want to go in detail about the definition of double bonded malnutrition. All of you know that it is the uh, coexistence of undernutrition and overnutrition. That is undernutrition, the wasting, stunting, micronutrient deficiencies, uh, along with overweight and obesity, and consequently leading to diet-related non-communicable diseases. And it exists in the individual as well as in the household or family and the population at large or in the community. And it goes on throughout the life cycle. And that's what has been outlined by UNICEF and WHO. And it's a overall worldwide burden. Recently, even in the low and middle income countries, double burden malnutrition, co a coexistence of the undernutrition among children and overnutrition in adults exist in high rates because of rapid increase in eco economic development, globalization, urbanization, changes in lifestyle, as well as change in the diet and physical activity. So the diverse is behavioral or lifestyle and habits and psychological factors are involved in it. Going to social and demographic factors like socioeconomic disadvantages and poverty, food insecurity, biological inheritability, epigenetic, early life experience, misguidance, and environmental factors like food supply and system, food portion sizes and cost, leading to poverty, cultural and social aspects, urban and built environment, trade and trade policy as well. Reducing child undernutrition, there is the past drivers and priorities for post MDG era, that is Millennium Development Goal era, after 2015, there was a publication, it says that despite having a prolonged history of undernutrition, Southeast Asia is, uh, South Asia is confronting a challenge of overnutrition. The prevalence of stunting among children under five declines substantially, that is from 69% to 40% between 1970 to 2010. On the other hand, the prevalence of child overweight and obesity is rising. The result came from the meta-analysis revealed that the prevalence of overweight and obesity among children and under adolescents was two to six percent in rural settings, 16 to 18 percent in non-affluent urban setting, and 23 to 36 percent in affluent urban setting in South Asia. It was based on the Indian subcontinent meta-analysis data. So the action on malnutrition for tackling the double burden malnutrition is an 
important opportunity and you have to address the malnutrition it is essential to achieve the sustainable development goal nutrition is critical to both health and economic that we all know and focus on investment for integrated solution will tackle malnutrition in its all forms so good nutrition undoubtedly promotes maternal will depend by promoting maternal infant and child health it will improve school and education performance supports a stronger immune system reducing communicable diseases and it will reduce the risk of other diseases that is non communicable diseases as well so in conclusion who categorically says that addressing the double burden of malnutrition will be the critical importance in achieving the ambitions of united nations decade of action on nutrition and the sustainable development goal as well coming to the scenario in bangladesh the prevalence of double burden malnutrition is cannot be ignored bangladesh is being a developing country but also it's improving its agricultural food processing education and other demographic sector is improving people are getting food easily and consuming more foods which is increasing the prevalence of overweight and obesity than the previous years it is more so in the urban areas and especially in the capital cities or big cities like dhaka and chittagong within the pace of this increment rate of overweight and obesity bangladesh has not been able to reduce the prevalence of undernutrition among children that much and that is the alarming that's why we are facing the double burden of malnutrition if the double burden malnutrition is increasing at this rate or is failing the rate of child mortality for malnutrition and maternal mortality for non communicable diseases will increase definitely in childhood overweight obesity there is a publication in bangladesh we found that 30% underweight and 14% overweight and obesity among preschool children is an average urban setting this is irrespective of different socio economic background comparing to in south asia mothers over 85% in bangladesh most of whom stay at home are the main caregivers of their children and therefore have a key role in family food planning and preparation and that is we have to focus on the maternal awareness because of their ignorance for the lack of their knowledge regarding the overweight and obesity that is posed in obstacle for the intervention program in bangladesh only 35% mothers perceived overweight and obesity as a health problem they don't believe it and nearly 70% of them were not aware of the health consequences or risk factors of overweight or obesity regardless of their level of education and family income so the challenges are definitely the issue of overnutrition is largely ignored lack of maternal knowledge about childhood overweight and obesity is lacking communicable diseases still being prioritized at the policy level non existence of health healthy school food policies and mismanagement and lack of resources also play a role on top of these coming to the present havoc of covid that has caused the potential impact on child health firstly and most importantly there is disruption of immunization and you know immunization has an indirect effect on childhood nutrition because of several factors and secondly directly nutritional deprivation and third children are missing their formal education as has already been talked about by my previous lecture from the president of nepas and is the consequent psychological impact 
And fourth, there is increased chances of child abuse and neglect because of the COVID lockdown. So the disruption of healthcare is enormous. Educational disruption, protection, vaccination, nutrition, and mental well-being, as well as preventive and curative services are all being hampered because of COVID-19. And UNICEF says over 6,000 additional children under five could die a day without urgent action. Just analyzing the EPI scenario in Bangladesh because of the COVID, there was definitely a disruption at the beginning and initial months of COVID-19 outbreaks we experienced delays in vaccination as Bangladesh seeing more infection and that panic and anxiety spread it among parents. They were very much afraid of taking their child to the vaccination center. And you can see here, in 2020, last year, in April, in March, we had the upsurge of COVID-19 in Bangladesh, and in April, it gone down vaccination coverage in all antigen. But in 2021, we tried to pick up, but still we couldn't achieve as much as 2019. You can see here, In comparison of 2019, 2020, and 21, still we have to do a lot to pick up the vaccination coverage. So more vulnerable children suffering from malnourishment is because of the impacts of COVID-19 on nutrition that is manifold. You can see in the picture worse the UNICEF has says regarding the effect of COVID-19 on childhood malnutrition. And over 10 million children to suffer from acute malnutrition in 2021, according to UNICEF, as reported in 28 July 2020, additional 3.9 million children in South Asia under the age of five could suffer from wasting and therefore become dangerously undernourished in 2020, as a result of the socioeconomic impact of COVID-19 pandemic. And this was published in Lancet. In Bangladesh, admission for treating severely wasted children with medical complications were down to 10% in April 2020 compared to pre-pandemic level, while essential nutrition services have now started to resume their capacity. June 2020 admissions were 26% compared with what they were before the start of pandemic. That is the scenario in Bangladesh. And COVID-19 can exacerbate malnutrition as well as me. Malnutrition could affect the COVID-19 in mothers, and children and make the current crisis an intergenerational one. Greater effort is needed to make sure that essential nutrition services are operating at full capacity and that parents feel safe to bring their children to health facilities for screening and treatment. That is said by UNICEF representative in Bangladesh. And that is the real scenario we have to tackle to achieve the SDG in real time. This is the projected scenario that might be facing by 2020 and will be very much aware of achieving our SDG goal in time. You see, in all severe wasting and severe underweight is very difficult to 
get through. So in conclusion, the increasing number of overweight, obese mothers is becoming a new health concern for Bangladesh and especially the COVID post-COVID era. The results of recent studies clearly show that double burden exists. Apart from that, the coexistence of undernutrition and the overnutrition may exist in the same household portrays the complex dynamics of possible causes. These findings reinforce the malnutrition prevention program must not ignore the nutrition concern of the whole household to prevent the bargaining of risk of double burden malnutrition in Bangladesh and other countries of the region. So the key message of my talk is, it is the high time to take the decision and to decide collectively whether children will be left out on their destiny or the children will be allowed their right to health. So we must want a smiling future of our children. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for that uh, wonderful. Uh, okay, uh, thank you for that uh, wonderful lecture. I think uh, we had uh, many communication. I'm Suranta, and uh, one point you emphasize is uh, COVID nineteen have uh, malnutrition can have uh, can effects can be enhanced by the COVID nineteen itself, and uh, even like things like immunization. Disruption of uh, immunization uh, can indirectly contribute to exacerbation of this uh, uh, incidence and then the incidence of obesity going up because children are confined to uh, most of the time the homes and uh, uh, the, uh, because of the poverty and other reasons, malnutrition also incidence is going up. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, lecture.